Hey everyone, we're talking about vitamin D toxicity in this lesson. So we're going to talk about some of the causes of vitamin D toxicity. We're also gonna talk about some of the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms, how we can diagnose it and how we can treat it. So vitamin D toxicity is also known as hypervitaminosis D. So that's just another name for vitamin D toxicity. Now vitamin D toxicity, really what it is, is it is toxic levels of vitamin D. So very, very high levels of vitamin D. Once you have reached a point where you saturate the storage of vitamin D in your body and saturate the receptors, vitamin D receptors, you can lead to a toxic state. So vitamin D is actually a fat soluble vitamin and it's actually mainly stored in the liver and fat tissue. So those are two areas where vitamin D is stored. So what are some of the sources of vitamin D? So some of the sources include exogenous sources, so outside the body. So these are dietary sources like animal food products. So these include fish and meat. We can also get it from fortified dairy milk. So a lot of times dairy milk is fortified with vitamin D. And really what that means is vitamin D is added to the dairy milk and that helps us absorb the calcium from the dairy milk. And then what's important here is I have it bolded is we can get it from vitamin D supplements. And this can be one of the major causes of vitamin D toxicity as we will see soon. Some of the other sources of vitamin D include endogenous synthesis, so synthesis inside our body. And what happens is the vitamin D is actually derived from cholesterol when the cholesterol is exposed to sun in our skin. So we can actually get vitamin D in that way as well. And once we have vitamin D, vitamin D is used for several processes. We're gonna talk about some of those processes in the next slide. But because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, it may be more difficult to actually get rid of vitamin D as opposed to some water soluble vitamins that can be excreted from the urinary system. And because of this, there are actually some maximum daily amounts of vitamin D that are suggested so that we don't take in too much. One of those is a maximum suggested daily intake of 4,000 international units per day. And this is from this article here entitled Evaluation, Treatment, and Prevention of Vitamin D Deficiency, an Endocrine Society Clinical Practice Guideline published in 2011. So this is the article that actually suggests this maximum daily intake. So what are some of the causes of vitamin D toxicity? So one of the causes of vitamin D toxicity is actually ingestion of very high doses of vitamin D supplements. So this is actually one of the most important and most common causes of vitamin D toxicity we can see. So when we look at the patient's history, we ask them questions, you know, how much vitamin D supplements are you taking? They may have other health issues that require them to take vitamin D supplements. And because of this, they can be taking too much. And a lot of times it may be due to prescription errors. There may be an issue with the amount that they're taking. They may be taking too much. So that is one important cause of vitamin D toxicity, ingestion of very high doses of vitamin D supplements. The second is ingestion of high doses of vitamin D supplements. So not necessarily very high, but high normal levels of vitamin D supplements, but they also have very high consumption of fortified milk. So fortified milk again contains vitamin D. And if they're drinking a very, very large amount of fortified milk, in addition to high doses of vitamin D supplements, even though those supplements are at the proper dosage, these two combined can lead to vitamin D toxicity as well. Now it's important to point out before I move on is that eating fish and meat don't seem to provide enough vitamin D to actually lead to vitamin D toxicity. And the endogenous synthesis of vitamin D from our skin does not appear to cause a vitamin D toxicity either. So these are often the two main culprits. But the next point is very important to recognize and identify, and that is that vitamin D can actually be excessively produced from granulomatous conditions. These include sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. And certain lymphomas can actually produce high levels of vitamin D as well. So granulomatous conditions like sarcoidosis and tuberculosis and certain lymphomas can lead to vitamin D toxicity as well. So it's important to think about these conditions too. So what is the pathophysiology of vitamin D toxicity? So really because there's so much vitamin D present, it leads to an increased activation of vitamin D pathways. So in our gastrointestinal system, calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D, 
leads to the increased absorption of calcium and phosphate. It also increases the absorption of calcium and phosphate from our renal system as well, from our kidneys. So calcitriol does both. So it is an important mediator of bringing in calcium into our body. And I have a whole lesson on the pathway as to how calcitriol does this. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on vitamin D and calcium. But just briefly, we see here in the gastrointestinal system, here is an enterocyte, here's the gastrointestinal lumen, and here's the blood vessel. Calcium can be brought in through a calcium transporter. It binds to calbindin, and calcitriol also can enter the cell. It is a fat-soluble vitamin, so it can cross the membrane. It binds to vitamin D receptor. It can also go in to the nucleus and activate genetic programs that lead to more calbindin and increased ATP-dependent calcium pumps on the blood vessel side. So that induces the enterocyte to bring in calcium into the blood. So that is a very simplistic look at this pathway. If you want more information, again, please check out my lesson on that topic. So what are the clinical features of vitamin D toxicity? Well, we basically really talked about what it does. It leads to an increased absorption of calcium. So really the clinical features of vitamin D toxicity are due to hypercalcemia or increased calcium in the blood. But first, it's important to recognize that even having high levels of vitamin D and hypercalcemia, an individual may be asymptomatic. They may not be presenting anything overt. So you may not be able to see this or they may not be complaining of any obvious symptoms. When they are symptomatic, they are often nonspecific. So we'll see all the different symptoms we can have with hypercalcemia. So we remember the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia with the mnemonic bones, stones, groans, and moans. And the other version is psychiatric overtones. So these are the categories of symptoms of hypercalcemia. So again, vitamin D toxicity causes hypercalcemia and it's gonna cause these symptoms, these following symptoms. So the first one is bones. So this leads to bone aches and pain. So we can see bone aches and pain in individuals with hypercalcemia. The next category is stones. So with regards to stones, these are nephrolithiasis, so kidney stones. This is really what this is, and it can be calcium oxalate stones. And we can also get calcium deposits in the kidney, so nephrocalcinosis. So these are issues that we can see with hypercalcemia. Now, with regards to groans, so we've gone through bones, stones, and then we're on to groans. Groans involve muscle aches and pains. We can see muscle weakness. We can see gout developing as well with these individuals. They also have gastrointestinal symptoms. So really Groans is encompassing a lot of pain and weakness with these patients. So gastrointestinal symptoms we see with hypercalcemia include abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, constipation, peptic ulcer disease, and pancreatitis because there's calcium deposits in the pancreas. And then in the last category, moans or psychiatric overtones that might help you with these next symptoms. These include depression and anxiety, fatigue and lethargy, sleep disturbances, confusion or an altered mental status, apathy, irritability and agitation, and in some severe cases can even lead to coma. So again, there's many, many different symptoms of hypercalcemia. And so we can see all of these symptoms and we can see that it may be nonspecific. And so it may be difficult to recognize that some of these symptoms may be due to hypercalcemia, which is ultimately due to the vitamin D toxicity. And there are some other clinical features of vitamin D toxicity as well. These include polydipsia. So they can be drinking a lot, have a high fluid intake. They can have polyuria, so a high urine output. They can be urinating a lot. And because they have high urinary output, they may be dehydrated. So they may have signs of hypovolemia. So these include dry mucous membranes and skin tenting and dry axilla, those types of signs. They can also have hypertension, so high blood pressure. And they may also have weight loss due to anorexia. And an also important point to note with hypercalcemia is that they can have cardiac arrhythmias. So they can have a shortened QT interval. So you can see here, this QT interval is a lot less than half of the R to R interval. So that could give you a clue. Now this is not necessarily an ECG of someone with hypercalcemia, but we can see that there is a short QT interval here. They may also have a flattened T wave 
and a shortened ST segment as well. So how is vitamin D toxicity diagnosed and how is it treated? So diagnosis of vitamin D is often a clinical diagnosis. So oftentimes a clinician will determine the diagnosis from the history and physical examination. So they can ask the patient whether they've been taking high doses of vitamin D supplementation or ingesting high amounts of fortified dairy milk. And if that's not the case, they can look into whether there's granulomatous disease or even lymphoma. There are specific laboratory investigations that are helpful as well. These include total calcium, ionized calcium, parathyroid hormone levels, and vitamin D levels. And again, in vitamin D toxicity, we often find hypercalcemia, so calcium levels greater than 11 milligrams per deciliter, and high vitamin D levels. So those high vitamin D levels are leading to overactivation of vitamin D pathways, leading to increased absorption of calcium from the gastrointestinal system and increased reabsorption of calcium from the kidneys. We can also do an EKG to assess for a short QT interval as well. So how is vitamin D toxicity treated? So oftentimes the important point about treating vitamin D toxicity is identifying the sources of the vitamin D. So a lot of times that can come from history, asking the patient whether they've been ingesting high levels of vitamin D supplements is one important question. And then it's important once you identify the source to discontinue exogenous vitamin D sources. So again, if it is high levels of vitamin D supplementation, you want to discontinue those sources. You also want to prevent excessive bed rest as well. So this helps prevent hypercalcemia of immobility. So if there's already an issue with hypercalcemia anyway from vitamin D toxicity, oftentimes clinicians will prevent excessive bed rest to prevent worsening or possible worsening of the hypercalcemia from immobility. IV fluids can also be used to treat the dehydration from the vitamin D toxicity as well. And for cases with severe hypercalcemia where an individual may have altered mental status, calcitonin and or bisphosphonates can be used to help reduce the levels of calcium. And bisphosphonates are stated to be better for hypercalcemia of malignancy. So calcitonin and or bisphosphonates are used in the cases of severe hypercalcemia. So again, it's a clinical diagnosis. Laboratory investigations include total calcium, ionized calcium, PTH, and vitamin D levels. We see hypercalcemia and high vitamin D levels. And an EKG is important to assess for a short QT interval. And then treatment is identifying the sources and discontinuing those sources, preventing excessive bed rest, IV fluids for dehydration, and in the severe cases of hypercalcemia, calcitonin and bisphosphonates could be used as well. So that was a lesson on vitamin D toxicity. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.